Hello and welcome to the fourth Obsidian API Bigby tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover how we take our imported animations and actually register them with the mod and then assign them priorities and other stuff so we can actually see them in the game. So we have our entity, we have our model, we have it in the game, we can see it, but it's not animated. So let's do that now. Um, right, we want to go to common proxy where we had this register animations method before where we initialize the animation registry. Um, First thing to do is to tell the registry that we are going to animate an entity. So animation registry dot um, register entity. Here we go. So we want model Saiga. I googled it. I was pronouncing it correctly, not Saiga, Saiga. So model Saiga dot class. And the entity type is going to be Saiga as well. That's just a name to attach to the model. Sorry, rather to the entity. And do we want model? Sorry, not model Saiga, entity Saiga. Yes, register entity, so we want the entity class. My apologies, Saiga, there we go. So yeah, register entity, and we want the entity class and a name for it, so Saiga in this case. So let's register our animations. So we want animation registry, and then register animation. Now there are three different methods here. We want the middle one that takes um, several arguments, I mean they all take several arguments, but specifically we want this uh, one for now. I'll go, I'll take you through it now so you can understand which one to take. So we we're going to register an animation to a specific entity. So we want to use our entity name that we've registered up here, so Saiga. We're going to use a binding, so a name for the animate um, for the animation. So if we're going to do walk, let's just call it uh, walk. Next, we need a resource, so let's go with Saiga walk, and then we have priority loops and is active function. I'm going to take each one of these individually because um, they're quite complicated. So the priority is an integer value. Um, it can be any value um, that is used to work out which animations have the highest priority, which ones have the lowest priority. Um, so Walk animations are high priority compared to an idle, idle animation, which is very low priority because you only want that to run if the entity isn't doing anything else. So walk animation, let's give it the priority of zero. Uh, oh, and I should say that the higher, a higher priority animation has a lower value. So um, this is a convention in um, priorities in programming. So a lower value means high priority. So let's just give our um, walk animation a priority of zero and if we're going to make an idle animation we'll give that a priority of say 50 so that's a lower priority therefore it won't run if the walk animation can run if that makes sense um, the next argument is a loops argument so that's saying it, when this animation finishes should it start again so for a walk, yes, we want it to start again. So we're going to set that to true because it should loop. Um, so as the player is walking, when they finish one step, they're going to take another step. So keep going until the player is no longer walking. Similarly for idle, it's just a short loop. Uh, I think the, the tail wags back and forth and the head bobs down a little bit. So we want that to keep going on and on and on until the entity does something else. Examples of things where you wouldn't want it to keep going would be... Um, the entity hitting something or like an attack animation you only want to attack once until it says attack again then it would play the animation again but you don't want it to keep attacking or playing the attack animation rather over and over and over again and then finally we have this is active function now this is a lambda function and it's not that complicated but if you want to go away and have a google about java lambda functions in 1.8 then do so i would recommend it they are very useful um, so we're going to define a function that allows, that checks basically if the animation is active. So if the animation is doing, if the entity is doing something that means it should play the animation. So an example would be for the walk animation, you should only play the walk animation if the entity is moving. Right. So let's define an is, is active function for walking. So is active function is walking equals, very straightforward so far. Now, 
This is a lambda expression that expects one input argument, which is an entity. So just call that entity in brackets and then an arrow going to um, a function, or rather this is what it does. So um, it takes an entity and then does something with that entity and it expects a Boolean because it's saying, should I walk, or sorry, should I play the walk animation or shouldn't I play the walk animation? So it expects a Boolean return. So walking is very straightforward. Um, there is a, a method in the APR util class that allows us to check if an entity is moving. So we do return um, obsidian API util dot is entity moving and then we pass it in the entity argument and why I'm like ah we need a semicolon at the end there nope still getting an error oh okay and because it's java 8 you must check that your project compliance is java 1.8 <laughs> so that should get rid of that if it's saying you're running on the wrong java version um I'm going to run through all that again because it's quite complicated. When an entity is animating, it needs to check uh, if an animation should play. So in our walking example, uh, it needs to check if the entity is walking. For the eating example, it would need to check if the entity is eating. If it is walking and that's the highest priority animation, then it will play the walk animation. If it's not walking, then it will look at other lower priority animations, um, such as eating and idle animation, and see if they are active. So to do that, we define a function. This is a lambda function, and we have a special type called isActive function, which is defined in the API. So we give it a name. So for example, is walking, and then all is isActive functions should follow the same thing. They take an entity, and they do some processing on it, and they should return a boolean. So in this case, Obsidian API util dot is entity moving is the method that returns. This returns a boolean um, that works out if the entity is moving obviously this is why we have to add the additional method to entity saiga um, this is moving method because this is used by the api to check if an entity is moving obviously so that's our is active function for the for walking animations so we pop that in here and then let's make one for idle now because idle animation should always be the lowest priority uh, if it gets there we want um, it's a play the idle animation. So we're going to make a special type of is active function called return true that always returns true because if we ever get to decide, um, if we ever get to the idle animation, then we want it to play because nothing else is playing. It means the entity is not doing anything. And we will have a look at doing the eat another time because that uses entity AI, which is a little bit further. So I'll come back to that in another video. But for now, we this is the animations registered. Uh, you want to use this method. So we want the um, entity. So we, this name here must match the entity name uh, that we registered with. And then the a binding for the animation, so walk or idle. The resource location, the priority. Remember, lower number is high priority. Whether it should loop. And then the is active function. Um, for the specific animation. So let's run that and have a look. So here we are back in the game now, and you can see we have an idle animation. We've got the tail swinging back and forth slightly. We've got the head bobbing up and down a little bit. Um, oh, and there we go, it's walking forward. So this is it playing on the loop, because obviously you want the entity to keep um, playing the step animation. If you've seen the step animation, then you know it's only from the uh, only just one step, that's why we have to play on a loop. Similarly, for the idle animation, the tail starts on the left, goes to the right, comes back to the left, and then, so this is effectively going animate, 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 animate. So that's what playing it on a loop does, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's currently not the, our is active function here is returning false because the entity is not moving. Um, and then once the entity starts moving, that will return true. Um, so the API is basically saying, it's basically checking the highest priority animation first, and if that returns false, as it's doing at the moment, then it goes down to the next one, 
um, and so on and so on and so on and so forth until it finds something that's active or gets to the bottom, which is like to be an idle animation, which should always return true. So we can see we've got our nice walk animation going again. So yeah, we now have animations. Fantastic. I will look at doing entity AI animations next.